So, we're back at this bullshit again. Miles is in town. I'm at Max's place. He's running the camera. So, let's start with Dogfish Head Sonic Archaeology. I don't understand this. It says it's a prohibition inspired cocktail, whiskey, rum, apple brandy with honey, lemon, and pomegranate juice. I guess they just threw together whatever back during Prohibition. Inspired <laughs> by the blending of musical influences at the genesis of American music, Sonic Archaeology is a melding of Dogfish Head whiskey, rum, and brandy with honey, real lemon, and pomegranate juices. The result is a prohibition style cocktail, artifact, Fit for the Roaring Twenties as well as today. Tasting notes, balanced sweet and tart with tropical fruits, lemon with a pleasant note character, enjoy over ice. The surprising thing about this for me is Dogfish Head, as far as I know, is a like beer brewery and they also make whiskey, as it turns out. So that's a surprise. There is something very bitter in that smell. Really? And I don't like it. I'm mostly smelling just kind of the graininess of it. Well, I'm actually not going to say what it smells like because you won't like it. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. So this is our first one of the stuff that we have so far because we haven't gone out for our big shopping spree yet. This is the weirdest. Here we go. Down the hatch, gentlemen. Hmm. Hmm. The base of the alcohol is not great, like the actual whiskey itself, but that kind of sits as a baseboard around the stronger flavors of lemon and pomegranate, and actually a little bit of honey too, it's very and sweet. strangely, they <coughs> managed to do the alchemy of making the alcohol aftertaste taste like hot dogs. That's, admittedly, that's you. It gave me the face exercise. <laughs> argue with it too much? <laughs> Like, it tastes like kind of the aftertaste of hot dog water, you know? You can smell that in the air. <coughs> that does explain a bit of the scent that I was getting off of this. I would not mind finishing this slowly. Because it does have good fruit flavors. It's just also got something a little wrong with it. <laughs> hot dog water. Round two, we've got Schwarza Kräuterlikör, Deutsche Tradition seit 1700 Qualität. It is an imported German liqueur. It says Schwarza is handcrafted from a medieval German recipe, which has been handed down through generations. The infusion of selected herbs, fruits, and roots, including ginger, pomerantz, and gentian, results in a most unexpected experience. Caramel color added. Now I looked up pomerantz because I've never heard of that, and I was like, Did they misspell. Pomegranates, like is there a translation error? The word Pomerantz does not exist outside of a person's last name. So this has ground up people named Pomerantz in it. I just want you to appreciate their sacrifice. That being said, Black it has are people. It has all the hallmarks of being like second rate Jägermeister, at least in terms of what people know about it. it doesn't smell too bad, it's got kind of a root beer smell. A little bit. A little bit of an herby scent. Well, no time like the present. Cheers. Hmm. I like that. It's a sweeter mm. Jaeger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually pretty sweet. It's got, got some anise. There's a little bit. Not a lot. You know what? It reminds me of the Nocino, which I like a lot. It reminds me of Galliano a little bit. It's, it's got that herbiness to it. It actually reminds me of the Jepsons a little bit. But it's so much better than either of those. I would actually drink this again. Not bad. Good, good choice. Round four, we didn't learn our lesson last time, so we're back to Old Smoky, Gatlinburg, Tennessee, handcrafted, mountain-made, Tennessee, mango habanero whiskey. Because mango habanero. Because right? we're gluttons for punishment. There's no literature on this bottle, so we're just going to dive right in. I haven't smelled it yet. Oh, it does smell promise. It's got a very nice mango scent. It's probably going to taste like crap. It's probably a lie. Cheers. Cheers. Ooh, that's got heat. Yeah, I could quite happily drink that. Drink that. I'm so confused with the old smoky now. Ooh, Kung Fu. The legend continues. <laughs> Are you okay? It's a bottle full of workout. Know, okay, I'm gonna be honest. That's what I expected the Tabasco whiskey to taste like. Well, not with the mango flavor. The mango flavor is actually pretty nice, but it is hot. It is spicy. It is spicing up my mouth, but it's not unbearable, and this coming from someone who is a real wimp about capsaicin. So it's gonna probably be burning for a while, but I, I not bad, honestly. I don't know if I would drink more, but I wouldn't not drink it if, if offered, so it's actually pretty good. Yeah, it is actually pretty good. 
That was the one that we were really banking on being terrible, so uh, Aperture better suck. <laughs> <laughs> Round five, Mazel Tov. Today we're drinking Manischewitz Blackberry. I've heard about this stuff like all my life, but I don't really know anything about it. It is not for Passover use, keep that in mind, gentlemen. Under strict supervision by the Union of Orthodox Jewish Congregations of America. And there's some Hebrew on it that I can't read because my Hebrew is very bad. Smells like blackberry wine. It is notably fairly cheap. Are you ready? Cheers, gentlemen. Shots of wine with my friends on a Monday. Hmm. Hmm. Very, very sweet. That is precisely blackberry wine. There's actually almost no wine taste to it. It's more like a blackberry syrup with a little bit of alcohol in the background. Just a little bit. It's pretty good. That's yeah, pretty nice. Pretty good stuff. This is, this is And it's cheap, and that makes it dangerous. This is why it so, sells so big in like the inner cities and things, because it's, it's way cheap and tastes pretty good. Tastes real good. And mm -hmm. for $10, you slam down a bottle of that, and you're done. And the bottle's enormous, so yeah, all right. Thank you. Just close it, because I've forgotten what I was going to say. Round six-ish. The rounds are made up and they don't matter. We're getting to the point where we've pretty much only got <laughs> gifts left. There's like one wild card. We're not going to do it tonight. Tonight we're looking at Huber's Blackberry Flavored Whiskey Copper Pot Distilled from Starlight Distillery. Starlight Distillery sits in the middle of 650 acres of farmland owned by the Huber family in the southern hills of Indiana. Okay, that makes sense. Bramble fruits are some of the crops grown on the Huber family farm established in 1843. We combine blackberries, one of the family favorite brambles, with whiskey distilled in a copper pot still. Okay, so that's basically <clears throat> everything that they said on the front of the bottle. I have been informed that their standard whiskey is actually pretty decent. I have enjoyed blackberry whiskeys before. Four. Let's sniff this. It smells like whiskey, so pretty much. At least it doesn't smell like something else. That's true. All right. Cheers. Cheers. That tastes a lot. <clears throat> <laughs> that tastes a lot more like actual just whiskey than I was expecting. It does have a good blackberry flavor, it's pretty smooth, but there's a lot of woodiness to it that doesn't mm. actually conflict with the blackberry, which is mm. nice. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little off put by that. If only because, you know, your reaction to my cocktail was, I'm offended that I could just be drinking Bundaberg. This is, I'm offended by the fact that I could just be drinking blackberry brandy or bird dog. Yeah, I mean, bird dog's definitely better, but this isn't bad. I would drink more. Yeah, this is definitely <coughs> not bad. I am going to confess I'm not a fan. It's just beaten out by competitors. You know what it is, though? The blackberry flavoring is very much a natural flavoring. This mm. tastes more like eating blackberries mm. soaked in wood. I can get... <laughs> Which, I'm, I'm okay with that. <laughs> Which one of us has not been soaked in wood at some point? Don't know if this is going to make it in. It's a fairly standard thing, but it's cock and bowl cherry ginger beer, which is the thing that we've seen a couple of places. Sounds neat. Let's see. On the back, there's a bunch of words that are the same color as the bottle, so I can't read them. It says, wow, you are holding in, hands, America's cherry ginger beer. Zippy zingy gingery. Try it, pow. You'll it. Enjoy. Enjoy. Why they did that... I don't know. Stupid. They do give you a recipe for making a Flavor Moscow mule. Your <clears throat> cock and balls, Chris. Hold on I'll now. Enjoy. Now, if you put those together, you'll find the secret message. And get Great. access to oh, JC Brad Burton's office. Or God mode. I can't open this. I am give, failing give it to hard. your bartender. Thank you. To your health. Very sweet ginger beer. Mm. That's not overly fizzy. That's good. That's, that's pretty good. good. I approve. The cherry is distinctly layered on top mm. of the ginger beer, and neither the twain shall meet. Mm. I think I would actually prefer their standard <coughs> ginger beer, which might have had once upon a time. I don't know. Maybe. But it's all right. Round seven by my account, we've got some more Jackson Morgan Southern Cream. This is salted caramel, which sounds exciting. Nothing in there that's new from last time. It does smell very good. The scent is fantastic. It's creamy and caramely and oh, I don't want to wait. Just, just fucking drink it. Drink it. Mm. Mm. Ooh. Yes, Ooh. indeed. Yeah. I am so oh, glad. Mm, 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 mm. So very, very glad 
that salted caramel <coughs> is the current flavor fat. It's way better than strawberry mm. kiwi. That did, that got the caramel right. Yes. That got the caramel right. Mmm. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that's, Fantastic. That's going bye-bye very fast. Oh, uh, we've been doing things in a really dumb order. We've finally come to Aperture Aperitivo Liqueur, product of Italy, prodotto secondo la ricetta originale. We don't know anything about this. We found it on the discount shelf of some random hole-in-the-wall liquor store up in University Heights, Ohio, and we were like, we need to buy something at this place. It's red. It's actually red. Like, it's that's not the bottle. That's nice. Max sniffed it, and he's been making groaning noises ever since. And I'm really excited about this because everything we have tried this time has been good to great. It's like I'm learning. Weird. Oh, oh god damn it. It smells very <laughs> dusty. Like I want to get something out and wipe it off. It does oh, have certain this. Oh, it has a no. certain wood varnish. That I'm going to. It doesn't <laughs> smell like something you'd necessarily want to drink and yet here we it go. smells like the sawdust trap on a table saw in your granddad's garage that yeah. hasn't been used since the 70s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe it. Has there, has it imagine pine saw without the pine. <laughs> it's just oh, the saw. Oh, I don't want to do this. I'm okay. Really, I, I know here no beer. Here we go. <laughs> to your deaths. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Mm. Um, Rather like nice actually. That ah. salt flavor is there, it's nasty. Oh, oh, oh. It's got a ah. bit of that pencil mm. eraserness. Mm. Yes! Yeah. There's almost a fruit flavor there. I'm getting like an herbal liqueur flavor right now, but there's something wrong about it. And it was this the is aftertaste. Not great. It's not the worst thing ever, mm. but I mean we've done that. We're never, we're never gonna top that. Don't challenge me. We got close. Don't challenge It kind of takes the fun out of it. Don't tempt me. But yeah, this is like gumballs that have been in the machine for five years. I stick on oh. my pine saw without the pine. Oh. Yeah, I just, it's really indescribable. It's almost as nuanced as the Jepsen's Malort, but it's not nearly as pungent. It's not nearly as like immediately reprehensible. It's just not pleasant. Mm. And the worst part is it's syrupy and sweet. So I mean, sawdust, pine saw, pencil shavings with syrup on top, and that's not okay. Round next, we've had a sudden windfall of new booze that we weren't expecting. News. And we're starting this off with Tesora Crema al Limone, or Cream of Alimony, as it has been dubbed. Yes. The recipe kept secret for generations in the mountains of Italy is now available to the world. A sophisticated, icy smooth drink like no other, Tesora complements both the warmest nights and most festive holidays. Irresistible, served alone, after a superb dinner, or alongside the finest dessert, this creamy liqueur will become as much a part of your family tradition as it is ours. Tesora is best enjoyed straight from the freezer, shake well and share, made by hand in small batches. It smells very nice. It's kind of like lemon meringue pie, almost. Basically, yes. And I mean a, a lemon-flavored cream liqueur, this sounds great. Great. If we're all ready, cheers, gentlemen. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's mm. quite nice. Very good. It's not very intensely lemon, like it's not real sour mm. or anything. And that's actually pretty good because it's mm. nice and smooth, nice and creamy. Good lemon flavor. I dig it. Good stuff. Older. Yes. It is good stuff. So thank you, sir. Round 9 or 10 by this point, we've got Amaro Tonico Ferro Quina. This is going to be weird. It says, we handcraft our Amaro based on an infusion of selected roots and herbs. A phrase that I am beginning to detest. Highlighting bitter lemon, china calisaya, gentian lutea, and iron citrate. I, they're, who the hell markets something is tasting like iron. There's a slight explanation for this. Ferro China was an aperitivo amaro created around 1881. History tells that the quinchona barks were cooked on iron plates before being macerated. My grandfather, Giovanni Porporo, was an asshole. I'm not going to read about him. But yeah, so <laughs> they take the flowers and cook them on cast iron, and that flavors it. And I am slightly concerned by this. It's got an interesting scent. It's got kind of a root beer scent, and I'm smelling some pencil eraser again. <laughs> really getting tired of this. But... This is exciting because it's new and unknown. It's probably gonna suck. Are we ready? Are we ever? To Aren't your to death. Always. Cheers. Oh. 
Huh. I fucking missed. Ooh. Ooh. Whoa. Mm. I Ooh. taste the iron. I gentlemen. taste the iron. I taste the iron. That's not pleasant. Oh, goodness. That's like Novocaine really and not pleasant. Mm. Novocaine and earwax. Ooh. Yeah. Laga. Oh, and it's like, it's killing the bitter part of my mouth. Oh, I taste mm -hmm. the bitter part. oh man, that's nasty. It was I like, know. It, it was like good for like two seconds. Yeah, it and was. Then, well, here's the thing. And it's very like, not. gentle root beer. Let me. And then just, no. Okay, well, we're running short. That was bad. Suffice to say, it was bad. Round the final. We're gonna cap this off with something that looks pretty nice. Passoa, passion drink made with passion fruit juice from Brazil. Of course, they put a little thing above the O in passion. That's not how you spell that. No literature on here, just some recipes. Uh, the only thing I've ever had passion fruit in as far as alcohol is Kinky Pink, which has also got some other stuff in it, but this smells very similar. I have a good feeling about it. Cheers. Cheers. It's a, hmm. There's a, there's a, it's passion fruit Kool-Aid with a little bit of that Alberto VO5 shampoo. Yeah, there's a soapiness to it, which is disappointing because otherwise it's got a very nice passion fruit flavor. I'll stick with Kinky Pink, I think. I made a rhyme! <laughs> and that's it. That's it. Today we're drinking, where the fuck is the front of the bottle? I don't know. Start the recording so that way, if you do it again, we'll get it on camera. I help. Oh God! I slap your mammy. Disarm, sir. Starlight distillery. That's two for you. <laughs> I know I'm still in a very, 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 very distant last place, but still. <clears throat> I'm not really sure what you're keeping track of, <laughs> and I two. don't want to know. Take two! Yeah. How did I start this off? I, you just said it was. Oh, whiskey's getting to me. <laughs>